Nut presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Ida Lupino and Basil Rathbone in Wuthering Heights. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. And incidentally, it's good to be back in Hollywood. Like most travelers, I had a wonderful time on my trip across the country. And like all homebodies, I'm glad to be home. Especially glad under the play like Wuthering Heights to do with stars like Ida Lupino and Basil Rathbone. For sheer drama and excitement, few stories can equal Wuthering Heights. It's a wild, tempestuous play, stormy as its locale in the bleak English moors. But through all that stormy atmosphere shines the clear light of one of the world's great love stories, the story of Kathy and Heathcliff. Kathy, the girl of distinguished family, who had the world within her reach, and Heathcliff, strong-willed and proud, who had only Kathy. Emily Bronte's powerful story of Wuthering Heights has become an immortal classic, and Samuel Goldwyn did full justice to it in his fine motion picture. As Kathy in our radio production tonight, we present one of the finest young actresses on the screen, Ida Lupino, in one of the greatest emotional parts of all time. At Heathcliff, you will hear one of the screen's finest actors, Basil Rathbone, in a part that only a fine actor should play. Last week, when I spoke to you from New York City, I told you how enthusiastically women from coast to coast had referred to both the Lux Radio Theater and the two products behind it, Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap. Coming back, I heard the same story and more. I learned that people everywhere regard the Lux Radio Theater as a real American tradition, just as they consider our two products, Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap, important to modern American living. <laughs> I, find that, I find that I've become a three-way personality. Some connect me with the Lux Radio Theater, some with pictures, and others, well, as one charming woman in New York said when my name was mentioned, the mail. Oh, yes, Lux Toilet Soap. <laughs> that, that and your magnificent response to Northwest Mounted Police would warm the cockles of any showman's heart. Now we present the story of Wuthering Heights, a story written a century ago, but as modern as tonight's newspaper. The curtain rises on the first act, starring Ida Lupino as Kathy and Basil Rathbone as Heathcliff. <laughs> Desolate and lonely are the rolling moorlands of England, where in the winter night the snowdrifts loom like giant specters in the teeth of screaming gales. About 100 years ago, a stranger lost his way on such a night. Freezing, blinded, and stumbling, he saw at last the fitful light of an old manor house, aged and crumbling on the hillside. He knocked desperately at the door was opened by a doddering old butler who stood staring at him. Then, without a word, he led the stranger into the musty old living room. There, in the dim candlelight, a man and two women sat without moving. The man was tall and dark-skinned like a gypsy. On his face, the stamp of years of bitter suffering. At his feet, a dog growled ominously. At last, the man turned and spoke. Who are you? What do you want? My name's Lockwood. I've lost my way on the moors. Down, Wolf, down. Strangers have no business on the moors at this time of year, and no business here at any time. But I couldn't find the village. A man could die out there on a the night like this. I'm afraid I'll have to stay until morning. Do as you please. I beg your pardon. I don't keep accommodations for visitors. You'll have to sleep with one of the servants. Heathcliff, you can't. He's our guest. And suppose you attend to his comfort. Ellen, show the gentleman to to the guest room, please. The guest room, Miss Lee? 
And one day the children fought openly. Your father gave me this pony. It's mine. Give me that pony, do you hear? Or I'll tell father you boasted you'd turn us out when he died. That's a lie. I never said that. Of course he didn't. He did. He worms his way into everything father does for us. He'll cheat us out of everything. You never had a father, you gypsy beggar. You'll never get mine. Kinsley, don't hit him. No, don't, don't. He's slip. Look out, he has a stone. There. Fancy that'll teach you. Kinsley, he's bleeding. Serves him right. Gypsy, stop. Heathcliff, are you hurt? He's, he's, he's with that stone. Please, Heathcliff, don't look like that. Why don't you ever cry when you're hurt? Like other people. Why should I cry? I'll pay him back someday. I don't care how long I wait. If I can only pay him back. Heathcliff, don't say those things. Come, Heathcliff. Now he has gone. We can have a game at the castle again. Oh, I, I don't feel like playing at the castle. Please. You always smile and laugh when we're there. Come on, Heathcliff. We'll play our game. Cliff, he will beside me on the stone, and we'll look out over the moors. This is our castle. Castle? Just tennis and crab, and you know it. It's not either. This is your castle, and you're a prince in disguise. Tell me about it again. It's all true. Cross my heart. Your father was Emperor of China, and your mother a queen of India. You were kidnapped by wicked sailors and brought to England. Don't make fun of me, Kathy. I'm not making fun of you. You're really and truly prince. And I'm your slave. No. You're my queen, Kathy. And you'll always be my queen. I won't let anyone else make it his queen, do you hear? Yes, Heathcliff. Your queen. And that's the way they grew up. Wild and free roaming the moors together. But Hindley grew more and more jealous. Cathy was 18 and Hindley half 21 when Mr. Earnshaw died. Good man, he never saw the evil of life and had raised pieces like his own son. But on the very day of his funeral... You're not going into that room to look at my father's body. Why? He loved me more than he did you. He's past your wheedling now. I'm master of Wuthering Heights. If you want to stay here, we need for a stable boy. A stable boy? That's all. Get out. And that's what he became. He slipped, who had lived under his roof as one of the family, was a stable boy. Give me a hand up to my sandal. Very well. Sir, you gypsy beggar. How many times must I tell you? Sir, that's better. By the time I come back in the morning, I want these tables to scrub. Scrub, you understand? If they're not, I'll thrash you to my own drop. Heathcliff. Yes, Cathy? Heathcliff, I hate him. How much longer are you going to stand this? I don't know what you mean. Look at you. Dirty and unkempt and in rags. Why aren't you a man? Why don't you run away? Run away? From you? You could come back rich and take me with you. Oh, why aren't you a prince like we said long ago? Why can't you rescue me, Heathcliff? Cathy, come away with me now. No, but where? Anywhere. You mean leave as we are? Live in haystacks. Steal our food. Oh, no, Heathcliff. No, that isn't what I want. You just want me to go off alone. Well, that won't do. I've stayed here since your father died, been beaten and cursed like a dog, abused and driven mad, just because I could be near you. And like a dog, I'll stay to the end. To the end. Yes, Heathcliff did run away. The curses and the insults were too much even for his great love. And so he disappeared. 
that they found a new world in her first introduction at Lincoln Manor, with Edgar Lincoln and his sister Isabella, both Cathay's age. Music and laughter were there, shining eyes and dancing, and it was a state from Wuthering Heights. Edgar Lincoln fell madly in love with Cathay, and they were constantly together. And then I remember so well. One evening, Edgar brought Cathy home in the pony car. As quickly as I could, I tried to warn her. My hand on the cart, Miss Cathy. Oh, Ellen. Oh, Ellen, we had the most marvelous time. Judge Linton has dressed from Liverpool. Cathy, come here. Excuse me, Edgar. There's something wrong with you. Excuse me, Cathy. When did he come last night? He talked so strangely. And he is now. Hello, Kathy. Heathcliff. Heathcliff, you said you'd stay away. Why have you gone so long? I didn't expect to find you here. Why have you gone so long? Because I've met the Lincolns. Because I'm at their house. Because I've learned to dance. And had a wonderful, delightful, fascinating time. Are you the stable boy? Would you mind putting my horse up for an hour? Yes. And you might wash your hands and comb your hair, Heathcliff. So I needn't be ashamed of you before a guest. And look after Mr. Lincoln's horse, please. Let him look after his own horse. Person, fellow. How can your brother allow such a beast of a gypsy stable boy to act like this? Beast of a gypsy stable boy? Of course. A roadside beggar giving himself airs of equality. What do you know about this, Cliff? Judging from this performance, all I need to know. He was my friend long before you. That blackguard? Well, I don't know. He belongs under our roof. And you speak well of him or get out. Kathy, are you out of your senses? Get out, I said. Or stop calling those I love names. Those you love? That stable boy? Yes. Kathy, what possesses you? Do you realize what you're saying? I'm saying I hate you. I hate the look of that milk-white face. I hate the touch of your soft, foolish hands. Some of that gypsy's evil soul has gotten into you, I think. Yes. Some of that beggar's dirt is on you. Yes, yes. Well, get out. Get out, get out. Kathy. Kathy, please. Come back. It's Kathy. Ellen. Ellen, where is he? Where is he? Please tell me. He's across the moor. Towards Tennyson Crash. Oh, he's close. He's close. Me. Oh, say you've forgiven me. It was not your heart that spoke, Kathy. No, my darling. Because my heart is yours. Kathy. The clouds are lowering over Gimmerton Head. Yes. Oh, Heathcliff. See how the light is changing. Kathy. You are such a part of all this. Perhaps we belong to the moors, you and I. Oh, Heathcliff. Make the world stop right here. Let everything stop and stand still and never, never move again. The moors never change. You and I never change. The moors and I will never change. Don't you, Kathy? I can't. No matter what I say or do, this is I. Forever. Kathy. Oh, smell the heather heat kiss. Fill my arms with heather. All we can hold. You're not thinking of that other world now. Don't talk, darling. Don't talk. All this might disappear. Ellen. Ellen, hurry, please. My hair's not nearly fixed yet. Well, what is the matter? Supposing you're not ready when your Mr. Linton gets here. <laughs> Any young man who comes sniveling back after the way you treated him. Well, right? and I sent my apologies to him, didn't I? Of course he'll come. Nothing I can't believe this change in you. Why, just yesterday it seems you were a stupid hair and scare him child with dirty hands and a willful heart. <laughs> oh, that's my other nature, Ellen. I still have it. You used to fly around wild. But now I can coax it into a cage whenever I want to. Please, Cliff. Since when are you in the habit of entering my room? I want to talk to you. Get out, Ella. I will not. I take all Get out. Now that we're so happily alone, may I know to what I owe this great honor? He's coming here again. Who? You know who I mean. That stupid fop Linton. You're unbearable. Utterly unbearable. 
Why are you dressed in silk? Because gentle folk dress for dinner. Why are you trying to win his puling flattery? I'm not a child anymore. You can't talk to me that way. I'm not talking to a child. I'm talking to Kathy. My Kathy. Oh. I'm your Kathy. Yes. And I'm to take orders from you. A dirty stable boy. Allow you to select what dresses I shall wear. And bow humbly to your horrible, wretched temper. Where is your heart? You had your chance to be something else. You left here once. Well, why did you stay away? Now let me alone. That's right. The dirty stable boy can't come near you unless he saw your dress. But who sold your heart? Who turns you into a cheap, vain, ambitious fool? Lincoln does. You let yourself be loved by him because you want to be a fine lady. Because it pleases your stupid, greedy vanity. Stop it. See, for beggar is all you were born to be. Kneeling beside the road, begging for favors. Not earning them, but wintering for them with dirty hands. So that's all I am to you now. A pair of dirty hands. Well, have them there. <gasps> have them where they belong. How dare you? How dare you? No. It doesn't help to strike you. Kathy's still with, with him? Yes, she is. What is the matter with you? What are you staring at? I want to crawl to her feet. Want her to be forgiven for loving her. For needing her more than my own life. For belonging to her more than my own soul. I want to beg for a smile. I don't care if she loves me or whom she loves. If she'll only look at me. Say my name. Oh, Heathcliff, you... Ellen, Ellen, she's coming now. Get out, Heathcliff. I'll wait outside the door. No, you can't. I want to be where, where I can see her, hear her. Now, Heathcliff. Ellen, where are you? Oh, here you are. Yes, Miss Cathy. Has, has Mr. Linton gone? Yes, he just left. Oh, Ellen. Ellen, I've some wonderful news for you. There's no place for that. Come inside. No, no, Ellen, listen. Edgar has asked me to marry him. And what did you say? I'm to give him my answer tomorrow. That's it. Do you love him? Of course. Why? Well, that's a silly question. Because he's handsome and pleasant to be with. Mm. Not enough. Well, then, because he'll be rich someday. And I'll be the finest lady in the county. Oh, it'd be heaven to escape from here, Ellen. And what about Heathcliff? Oh. Heathcliff. Ellen, he gets worse every day. It would degrade me to marry him. I wish he'd never come back. Ellen, what was that? I think... Oh, nothing. Uh, the wind, perhaps. Oh, well, my darling. If Master Edgar and his beautiful home mean heaven to you, you'd better enter that heaven and take your place among the Linton Inns. The only thing is, Ellen, I wonder if I belong in heaven. I dreamed once I was there. And I broke my heart with reason to come back to earth. To the bleak moors. The angels were so angry they flung me back. And I awoke, sobbing with joy, on top of Wuthering Heights. Oh, Ellen, I suppose I've really no more business marrying Edgar than Linton than I'd have in heaven. But, Ellen, Ellen, what can I do? You're thinking of Heathcliff. Who else? He's sunk so low. He seems to take pleasure in being mean and brutal. And yet, he's more myself than I am. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. Everything he suffered, I've suffered. The little happiness he's known. I've known, too. Everything else in the world died. And only his could remain. Why would you still be full of Who was that? Ellen. Ellen, I heard... Miss Cassie. Miss Cassie. Yes, Susie. He's first taken Master Hindley's best horse. He's gone. Gone? Ellen. Ellen, did you hear what I said? Yes, Miss Castle. How much did he hear? I am not sure, but I think to where you said it would degrade you to marry him. Oh, no. No. Miss Cliff. Miss Cliff, come back. 
Act Two of Wuthering Heights, starring Ida Lupino as Kathy and Basil Rathbone as Heathcliff. <laughs> On that stormy winter night a century ago, the traveler Lockwood sat in the musty guest room at Wuthering Heights, listening to the story told him by the old servant, Ellen. Outside, the wind swept over the moors, shaking the ancient house to its foundation. The lamp on the mantelpiece flickered, casting eerie shadows. Come in. 
Slow cut, eh? How are you, Heathcliff? Um, have you met my sister, Isabella? Oh, I'm sorry. How do you do, Miss Linton? We are glad to see a guest, sir. Thank you. Well, Heathcliff, I must say, I've never seen such a complete change in a man. You seem to have prospered. I must have gone to America. I did. We wondered where you went. <laughs> you must have found at least a gold mine. No. I merely remember that my father was Emperor of China and my mother a Queen of India. I beg your pardon. So I claim my inheritance. Kathy will understand. It's an old joke between us. I see. Are staying long in the neighborhood? I'm staying the rest of my life. Really? I've just bought the horses. The cattle and the moors belonging to the estate known as Wuthering Heights. Oh, no. You mean Kathy's brother Henley sold out? Yes, but he doesn't know it yet. I imagine it will be a shock when Henley discovers his gambling and liquor debts were paid up for him by his former stable boy. He's crazy. He's crazy. He can't have done that. That's as underhanded a piece of work as I've ever heard of. If I'd known Henley was in such financial straits... That his holdings were being stolen by his May I remind you, Mr. Edgar Linton, that I'm not a stranger? I am merely a neighbor. Now I'll say good night. Wait, Heathcliff. Well? I want you to know that we sometimes have friends who come here as guests. Edgar and I. You're welcome to come too. But not with the old scowl on your face. Or the old bitterness in your heart. Thank you, my old friend, Chappie, for the warning. Oh, I just remembered I forgot to congratulate you on your marriage. I've often thought about it, I assure you. May I now express my delight? Good night. Edgar, I think you behaved abominably. What? And you too, Kathy. What in thunder do you mean? You could at least have been civil. You dismissed him as if he'd been a, a servant. Do you consider him anything else? Well, I find he's grown fascinating and distinguished. Really, Isabella? I hope I misunderstand. Well, you don't. We see all too few people. And I, for one, shan't be rude. It's... Oh, Edgar. I greatly dread what the future will bring. Nonsense, darling. I tell you, the past is dead. That's all, Joseph. I'll occupy the master bedroom. Yes. You will stay on, of course. Thank you, sir. Uh, shall I attack Master Hindley's things? No. Just move them out of the master's bedroom. He will remain under this roof. Master Hindley, sir? Yes. He gave me a roof once when I needed it. I take it he's drinking a great deal. Yes. Though Dr. Kenneth has ordered him not to. Give him all the drink he wants. Uh, yes. A lady's waiting to see us, A lady? From Linton Manor. Oh, why didn't you tell me? In future, I'll announce visitors at once. Oh. Miss Linton. Are you disappointed, sir? Not at all. I was passing by and my horse went lame. I see. I I just want to tell you that I'm furious with my brother and Miss Cathy. They received you most shamefully last night. Your brother didn't send you with this apology, eh? Oh, no. In fact, he's forbidden me to... Forbidden you to, um, to speak to me? Yes. And Kathy also forbade you? Yes. Then in all the moorland, you're my only friend? I... I would like to be. Thank you. Miss Linton, I enjoy frankness. You didn't come here to apologize, and your horse didn't go lame. Why? Well, you came here because you're lonely. Because the house you live in is too happily wedded for an outsider. Because it's no joy to ride the moors alone. Isn't that right? Yes. Then you needn't be lonely anymore, my dear. Oh. You think it's strange that I should kiss you? I... I don't know. You hated it? No. I see you like frankness, too. The same strange power that Heathcliff had held over Cathy. He seemed to hold over Isabella, too. 
Against her brother's wishes, she came often to Weathering Heights, and she was seen many times with Heathcliff riding across the moor. Then one night there was a party at Linton Manor. Heathcliff had not been invited, but he came as Isabella's guest. He danced every dance with her, but his looks were all for Cassie. Dark, brooding looks. Until the guests grew uncomfortable and left before the evening had well begun. Later that night, Cassie went to Isabella's room. Isabella, may I come in? If you wish. You getting ready for bed? Yes. Wasn't it a lovely dance tonight? Though I think you could have been more gracious to my guests. Isabella, may I speak to you for a moment? Well? You behaved disgracefully. In what way, may I ask? It was bad enough asking Heathcliff here without consulting us or preparing us. You have forbidden me. But to make a spectacle of yourself. To throw yourself at him the way you did. Nobody else would pay attention to him. You refused to dance with him. I had to dance. Every dance as a result. Oh, you fool. You vain little fool. Really, Cassie? I'm going to open your eyes, Isabella. He's using you. Using you to be near me. To smile at me behind your back. To stare at me until our guests fear his murderous, gypsy look. To try to rouse something in my heart that's dead. Well, I can't let you help him any longer. So that's what you mean. <laughs> it's you who are vain and foolish, Cassie. He's kissed in love with me. It's a lie. It's not a lie. He told me so. He kissed me. He's... Yes, kissed me. Held me in his arms. Told me he loves me. Isabella. I'm going to your brother. Yes, go to Edgar. Tell him he's kissed asked me to marry him. And I said yes. You hear? Yes. Isabella, you can't. He's not a man. He's something horrible and dark to live with. I know why you say such things. Because you love him. How dare you? You do that. love him. You're mad with pain and jealousy at the thought of my marrying him. Because you want him to pine for you. Dream of you. Die for you. Why, your face is the lovely Mrs. Edgar Linton. You won't have him happy. You want to hurt him. Destroy him. But I want to make him happy. And I will. I will. Sit down, Kathy. I won't say I'm not surprised to see you. Does Edgar know? I doubt if he'd approve. Heathcliff, is it true? Is what true? Did you ask Isabella to marry you? Did you? <laughs> oh, Heathcliff, you mustn't do this villainous thing. She's never harmed you. No, but you have harmed me. Then punish me. That's what I intend to do. I don't understand. Every moment I hold her in my arms, when I kiss her, when I promise her life and happiness, you will be punished. You'd marry her? To do that? Yes, to teach you the ways of pain and the hell I'm in. Heathcliff, this is worse than I thought. If there's anything human left in you, don't make me a partner to this crime. It's mad and stupid. If your heart were only stronger than your dull care for the world and its conventions, I'd live silent and content in your shadow, begging for an occasional word or thought as I used to. But no, you had to destroy me with that weakness you call virtue. You had to keep me tormented with that cruelty you think so pious. How have I been cruel? You wish to be known as the finest lady in the county. You wanted your luxury and your light. At the same time, you wanted to keep me your despairing lover. Now that I'm returned... Had you given me the smile of love, I might have been content. Well, now you needn't think of me as your despairing and foolish lover. You can think of me as Isabella's husband and be glad for my happiness, as I am glad for yours. Curtain rises on the third act of Wuthering Heights. a hundred years ago. A candle burns low in the dreary guest room. There's no sound but the wind outside and the hushed voice of the old maid servant as she tells her story. It was then that Isabella Linton came into this house as a bride. Yes, Heathcliff married her out of revenge. The same revenge that made him keep Henry here 
a doddering, broken fool slowly drinking himself into the grave. Isabella learned the reason for her marriage to Heathcliff, but she was powerless to do anything. And then one day, Dr. Kenneth, an old friend, came to see her. He had come that morning from Linton Manor. I tell you, Isabella, go back where you belong, to Edgar's house. Edgar disowns me, Dr. Kenneth. I know, but he needs you now. Kathy's gravely ill. Really? Didn't you know? It's a matter of days now. Perhaps hours. She, she can't be dying. Fever. Inflammation of the lungs. This intense cold and... And something else. Something else? Yes. I call it the will to die. Kathy dies, I might begin to live. Isabella! Begin to live. Huh. In this house with Heathcliff, nothing can live. No, Henley. Nothing but hate. Goodbye. So you think you'll begin to live when Kathy dies? Well, you won't. Henley, what is it? This house. I can feel the hate within it like a, a crushing weight. Of course you can. And you. He hates you even more than he does me. Stop it. He loathes you. <laughs> Every time you kiss him, his heart breaks with rage that it's not Kathy. Isabella. Why don't you do what I've been too weak to do? Kill him. Don't talk to me. Get away. Kill him. Kill him while there's still time to save your immortal soul. <laughs> well, Henry. Remarkable. He's clear. Really, Henry, the first coherent speech I've heard from you in weeks. Please, please, please don't. I, I tried to stop him. Thank you, my dear wife. Your loyalty is touching. Your curses will come home to feed on your own heart. Every agony you've given will return. Laugh now, Heathcliff. There's no laughter in hell. Heathcliff, why do you have him here? I can't breathe with him in this house. Existence would be so much less without my boyhood friend under my roof. Oh, Heathcliff, you poison yourself with paying him back what he gave you. Send him away. And love will come to this house. Kiss me, Heathcliff. Tell me you love me. Tell me, darling. Why isn't there the smell of heather in your hair? Oh, Heathcliff, let me come near you, please. You're not black and horrible as they say. It's just you're full of pain, all twisted inside. I can make you happy, my darling. Let me, please. You'll never regret letting me try. I'll be your slave. I bring life to you. Life and sunshine and freshness. Put your arms around me. Look into my eyes. Your eyes are empty. Like Linton. They aren't empty. If you look deeper, look at me. I'm pretty. I'm a woman. Let your heart see me just once. It's no use. Why did God give me life? What is it that hunger and pain, a naked runner and a storm of spears? This is a bell. Ellen. What do you want here, Ellen? I've come from Linton Manor to speak to Mr. Isabella. And then you'll do so in front of me. Her brother is asking that she come home for a visit. So, he's lost some of his pride, has he? Well, there's none gone in this house. Please, Mr. Isabella, he needs you. Needs her? What is this, Ellen? Why does he need her? Let go of me. Kathy's ill. Yes. She's dying. Tell me the truth. Yes. She is dying. Dying. Joseph! You're not going, Heathcliff! Yes, sir. Settle my horse at once! No! He belongs to Edgar! She belongs to me! If he's dying, let her die in his arms! Where she belongs! Let her die! No! Let... Speak the pace! Get out of my way! Heathcliff! No! No! And there was a murmur from the heights. A far away and wild, heartbroken moan. The wings of Lucifer beat on the night. The soul of Lucifer wept, all alone. Shall I read some more, darling? No, Edgar. Will you open the window? Won't it be too cold? Please. Of course, darling. Oh. Oh, I can smell the heather. Edgar. Isn't there a soft wind? Isn't the snow almost gone? Yes. Quite gone. Ed, will you? you get me something? Anything you wish, my darling. Some heather. The beautiful patch near the castle. Will you get it from there, Ed? What castle, Kathy? The castle on 
moves, of course. Bring me some from there, I guess. You're in a fever, dear. There is no castle on the moors. Terry. Terry. On the little hill beyond Wuthering Heights. You mean Peniston Crag? Yes. Yes, please go. But why do you call it a castle? Because I was a queen there once. Will you bring me the heather, darling? Yes. If you rest while I'm gone and sleep. You're so kind. So good. No, my darling. You made me the finest lady in the county. Such lovely clothes. I, I've always adored that velvet dress most. Wasn't it a wonderful dress, Edgar? Wonderful when you wore it. And you'll wear it again soon, my Kathy. Go now, please. Get me the heather so I can have it on my pillow. Sleep, my darling. I'll be back with the flower you want. What is it? Well, Kathy. He is not to be disturbed, sir. Master Edgar's gone to the doctor. Get out of my way.
Will you come? I'll be waiting. on the timeless love story of Kathy and Heathcliff. And Wuthering Heights fades into the past. But we'll return to the present and bring back Ida Lupino and Basil Rathbone for a hail and farewell. Oh, but not a farewell to the story of Wuthering Heights, Mr. DeMille. I don't think the world will ever let it die. Well said, Ida. And to play in it is one of the unforgettable experiences of an actor's life. Do you know, C.B., I have a... Well, said another reason to be grateful for the privilege of being your Heathcliff tonight. Another reason? <laughs> it strikes me I'm the one who'd be grateful to you. No, C.B. I'm delighted to play a part that isn't all villain for a change. Oh, why, Basil, I didn't know you felt that way about villains. <laughs> must remember that, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> oh, by the way, I listened in last week and discovered you were in New York. What's the report on Broadway? Well, Broadway is just as busy as Hollywood, I'd, uh... I had a kind of busman holiday going to the theater. <laughs> Well, that may not be a holiday, but it's a very good way to find place for the Lux Radio Theater. Now, before we leave the stage, I'd like to tell the audience just one thing about Lux Soap that's from my own experience. Lux Soap is the gentlest complexion care I've found anywhere. I've used it ever since I came to Hollywood. I like it better all the time. That enthusiasm for Lux Soap must be contagious, either. Everywhere I went, I found it had plenty of friends. What about next Monday night, C.B.? Next Monday night... 
Uh, Basil, we're, we're going to present a play that was a great success on the screen. Nothing Sacred. And our stars will be Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. and Joan Bennett. You'll hear Joan Bennett as a, as a girl who becomes a national heroine overnight. And Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. as the reporter who made her famous. Nothing Sacred is a romantic comedy with a surprise twist. And behind it all is a warm human story. I, I know you'll enjoy it next Monday night. Oh, yes, I saw the picture. Oh, with Joan Bennett and Douglas Fairbanks Jr. in the cast, I think you'll have a great radio play, Mr. Camille. I'm certainly going to listen. Good night. Good night. <laughs> 